Microsoft Teams meetings are a great way to collaborate with others. And in this video, I'll show you seven tips that I really like to use in order to make those meetings even more effective. We can use Microsoft Teams on both a Mac and a Windows system. So in this video, I'll demonstrate using a Mac. Check the card above if you're a Windows user so you can see how to do these tips in a Windows environment. Tip number one. When I'm creating meetings, I can go in and I can create a meeting. I can meet now or I can schedule a meeting. I always like to use the calendar for scheduling meetings because this way if I go in and schedule a meeting, I'll get more options. This will actually carry through to several of the other tips. Now I also can do a webinar or a live event. If you look at my other video on eight tips for teams, I go through those a little bit more, but let's go into scheduling a meeting. When I schedule a meeting, let's say we'll talk about wolves. So we're going to have a talk about some of the wolves that we might see while we're out on our hike. Now what's important is I'm going to put in my required attendees. So in this case here, I'll put in Deanna. So Diana Prince, that's actually Wonder Woman. Let me go here and put Diana Prince in there. And I'm going to go in, I could make it repeat or put a specific time in there. And I'll choose the channel that I want to put this meeting into. So I can go ahead and say we're going to put this in the Meeting About Wolves channel. Now you might wonder why did I want to schedule this meeting? There's a number of great reasons. So I'm going to go ahead and send that to everybody and you'll notice that that meeting now becomes scheduled in my Teams environment. It also brings us to tip number two. Tip number two. I'm going to go into the meeting that I just scheduled using the calendar. You can go into edit or double click it and I get the meeting information here. That's great. One of the things I can do is go to breakout rooms. It's usually very convenient to have breakout rooms during my meeting so that I can put people into conversation groups. But the great thing about this is that by scheduling the meeting, I can create these breakout rooms in advance. For this demonstration, I'll just choose two breakout rooms, but you can have a number of them. So I'm going to create two breakout rooms in here and I can start preparing these breakout rooms in advance because I did schedule this meeting in advance. For example, I can go in and edit the first one and we'll call this, uh, wolf food. We're going to bring some wolf food on there and I'm going to go in there and create that particular breakout room and we'll go into our next one here and we'll call it wolf uh, clothing because we want to make sure that we bring some uh, sheep outfit so we can put our wolves in sheep's clothing. Now the other thing of course I can do is because I've got a p participants here, I've already put Diane here as one of my participants, I can actually pre-assign her to one of the rooms. So let's say she's an expert in uh, working with wolf food. She's now going to be pre-assigned to that group so that when I go into the meeting, I'm going to be able to open up those breakout rooms and all my participants will automatically go into the rooms where I want them to be. Let's go ahead and look at the meetings and we'll move on to tip number three. Tip number three. So now you can see that both Diana Prince and myself are in the same meeting. You can see that she can see the meeting on her computer. And if I go into the more button, one of the things that I like to do is turn on live captioning. So if I turn on live captioning, now everything that I say will actually show up on the screen and be attributed to me. So I'm going to start talking and you can see that it's now showing the live captions down at the bottom. Now there is a neat feature here as well. Notice that underneath my image here, if I hit this ellipse here, I can pin myself, spotlight myself for everybody. But notice there's another ellipse down here at the corner. That's where I can change the spoken language. So let's say I change the spoken language to German. Now it's going to use the text um, recognition to have this in German. Now there is a little bit of translation that can occur but it's really more designed so that I can have text recognition for the transcript. This is not good translation. It's more transcription. If I go to Diana here, for example, and I put on her um, live captions, so you can see here, it's really more that both of us speak German. In fact, if I go to the ellipse on hers, notice that if I go to the language, it changed the whole meeting to German. Ich kann ein bisschen Deutsch sprechen, aber nicht viel. So what happened there is it did take this translation here. I'm not sure how well that recognized the translation, but I could copy and put it into a translation software and see. I'm going to go back to the English language. I'm looking forward to when the translation is more than just transcription. So we'll stay tuned for that to see if this becomes more robust where everybody can speak different languages and we can have the live captions in those 
various languages for the specific learner. So I'm going to go in here and I will turn off the live captions just so that it's not a distraction. Those can be very helpful as well if you're in an environment where you don't want to have the microphone or the speakers on or you don't have headphones with you, you can put on live captions and you can read what's happening in the meeting. That brings us to tip number four. Tip number four. If I go into the ellipse up here, I can go into meeting options. Now meeting options are available to me as the organizer of the meeting, and they can also be turned on and off by default by your IT administration. So this is what normally I will have. These are the settings that are there set by my IT department, which happens to be me. But I could go in and do things like, for example, for this meeting, I could turn off reactions and I could turn on questions and answers. When I save this, you'll notice that underneath reactions, I'll only have the op op ability to raise my hand. I don't have any of the other actions. And if I go to Diana here, notice her reactions, all she's able to do is raise her hand. All the other reactions are removed. Also, I put the Q&A on here, so I now have the Q&A menu on here. So it was not set up for this meeting, but I can I can go in there and I can set it up for the meeting if I want to go in and um, for subsequent meetings, I can turn Q&A on as a meeting option. But the menu is available to me, so I have that there. And I can go in, again, go into the meeting options and I can remove those menu items as well and put reactions back on. Go back to what I had before. Now you can see my reactions are back. You can see that Dana's reactions are back as well. So we have those available to us. Tip number five. Well, you notice that my icon is down here with my, my tile is down here with my image on here. What if I want to have them all across the top? If you go into more and you go into gallery at top, what this does is if you have a number of people in your meeting, it'll put them all at the top. You can even go and do things like spotlight them for everybody. So if you have somebody that's presenting, you can spotlight the person who's presenting. It spotlights it for everybody. So it'll show up for them. I'll just turn the spotlighting off here. But what I can do is have this gallery at the top so that I can see all of the different participants here. And then that makes it easier to find things like if somebody's asking a question, just if somebody is asking a question, by the way. So let's say Diana, for example, goes into a reaction, puts up her hand. I can see very clearly here that she's got her hand up. The other thing I can do is go to people and that'll give me a list of who has their hands up and down. I can even go in there and I can lower her hand if I've answered the question and she hasn't removed that. That's, I guess, bonus tip uh, five and a half. Tip number six. So sometimes what we'll have is we'll have a situation where we want to mute someone. So let's say I go in here and I want to mute Diana from uh, using her microphone. Then I go over here and she'll say, well, I would like to unmute myself. And now we can have this battle of the mute and unmute. You can change that behavior. You can make it so that uh, she's unable to unmute herself. Or what you can do is if you want to have it so that you're presenting and other people aren't um, interrupting you and such, you can go to meeting options. And we had this for tip number five as well. And what you can do is you can say, let's just mute the mic for all participants or mute cameras for all participants. And now she's muted and she doesn't have the option of using her mic. She has no option to use the mic to communicate with us. Tip number seven actually has two places where we can do this, and that's downloading an attendance list. If I go to the people menu during the meeting, you'll notice up here under participants, I can go in and I can download the attendance list, but there's actually even a better way. So I'm going to close this meeting. We're going to end this meeting and both of us are now leaving this meeting. It was a great meeting. I really enjoyed that. So I'm now going to go back to teams. Because I use the calendar in order to schedule that meeting, I can now go into that meeting again and I can go to the attendance tab. Up here on attendance, I now get a quite a detailed attendance report where it talks about the participant participation of the people that were in the meeting. So here you can see that Diane was here. I can drill down. I can see if she came in and out of the meeting as the meeting was occurring and I can download the attendance list from here as well. So we have a little bit more robust of an attendance report by scheduling the meeting in advance and then getting access to this attendance tab. Plus, even when this meeting is over, I'll be able to have a list of all the meetings that I've had and I can go back and pull the attendance reports. I hope those seven tips will make your Microsoft Teams meetings even more effective. If this video is useful, like it and subscribe if you want more tips on how we can use technology for learning and teaching. I also have a couple of videos on how we can work with the Microsoft Teams environment. So there's some videos here on tips that you can use in Microsoft Teams. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.